Okay, so Porfirio, Porfirio Diaz was definitely uh, someone who was good at holding on to power, not totally good guy. It's kind of interesting. Another little bit about his reign is that he was also hard on Indians, just like in America. We were very hard on our Indians. There was a group called the Yaquis, and he, <clears throat> um, the Yaquis were pretty tough, but he eventually uh, wore them down. He offered a bounty of 100 pesos. For the ears of all dead Yaki warriors, that's gross. Okay, bounty hunters slaughtered unarmed peasants. Um, two, one year in 1892, 200 Yaki prisoners were taken out to a gunboat into the Pacific Ocean and just thrown into the sea. Uh, in 1908, a boatload of Yaki's uh, bound for slavery in, U in the Yucatan committed mass suicide. So, again, Diaz was willing to drop the hammer and, uh, and be vindictive if he had to and be tough if he had to be okay here's a big criticism so again why did mexicans start to flow north okay uh porfirio 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 uh he he wanted to develop mexico but he always favored um foreign investors and the rich uh and there was these farms these big kind of corporate farms called hacendendos or haciendas and they wouldn't cultivate a ton of their land because they just were keeping themselves in good shape okay this also drove they were kind of so corrupt and these haciendas were huge again some of them still are there and you can see they you know were just completely huge so this course brings in uh my man sabata emiliano sabata that he was the one that was trying to get these haciendas to stop stealing land, um, to stop, you know, completely smashing down the people who lived there. Because the people who lived there had to buy everything from the company store. Often they were just living in debt, uh, going week to week. Uh, one, if they had schools, there was one place, if they had a school, they wouldn't teach the farmers arithmetic because they didn't want them to teach them math because they didn't want them to be able to count their pay. Uh, it's just shady as all get up. Okay. Here's a crazy thing back. So again, Porf Porfirio Diaz is definitely a guy who's favoring the rich. There was foreign real estate corporations coming in and stealing land. Okay. They buy it up or steal it because the, the Indians or the people, the local people didn't have a deed. Um, Domestic real estate corporations were given one third of all lands they surveyed. Okay, that made up 125 million acres. Um, there was one, oh, sorry, just 3,000 families almost owned almost half of Mexico. Okay, here's the craziest one. One fifth of the country, okay, an area the whole size of Japan, basically in Mexico, was in the hands of 17 families. So Mexico was not an equal place. Again, Porfirio did bring in railroads. He did bring in some development. He started uh, – the government had enough money, but regular people were not really benefiting. Uh, American corporations were coming down and doing really well. But, again, they were – one guy, Edward L. Doheny, was – literally had an oil um, field. And he was sucking out 50,000 barrels a day and almost paying no taxes on it. Okay. Uh, Diaz, there was a joke against Diaz that said uh, only gringos and bullfighters get justice from a Mexican court. So you could kind of tell that Diaz wasn't there for all people. He was respected by a lot of people. Um, but when he starts to get old and doesn't set up a next leader, there you get some chaos. So who rolls into the story next is this guy, Madero. And this guy, Madero, is really interesting, and his wife, Sarah, really interesting guy, also from a very, very rich family. Um, let me get to the right page. But there was some economic problems that made people starting to question Diaz. Um, you know, just up and down, regular of the economy, but... It was a big crisis in 1907 in America, and that dribbled down to Mexico for the next couple of years. So that kind of hurt uh, Mexico, and then, of course, people started questioning Diaz. 
So Madeiro comes in 